So I think this might be working. Um, I'm still having trouble figuring out YouTube Live with my iPhone. I've tried a few different things with the rotation. Um, for anyone who's curious, it seems like the rear-facing camera for me has trouble with the um, with the horizontal versus vertical. It's asking me to always rotate the device after I start a live stream, but I think I'm using the front-facing camera so I can't actually see myself um, as I'm talking, which is a little frustrating, but I think that works for the Facebook Live, so maybe that's the difference. Um, and I apologize for being over an hour late. I, I said I was gonna do face, uh, YouTube Lives at eight o'clock every day. It's been hard for me actually to keep a schedule. I'll try to get better about that, but I think maybe I'll shoot for eight, but if I happen to be on an hour earlier, an hour later, um, that might have to be what happens. Um, and also I'm still dealing with this KU fallout. So they warned me a few days ago that all my books are being pulled out of KU. Um, I'm trying to desperately convince them to let me back in before they take my books out and I lose 70% of my income. Um, so that's been a little bit stressful. But anyway, this video is about how to revive a backlist. And a lot of this stuff is not going to be different from other videos that I've posted. Especially, I, I posted one like what to do if your book isn't selling or the three mistakes every author makes. Um, when you're talking about reviving a backlist or reviving an old book that isn't selling or even you have a brand new book. There's a, there was a comment in my Facebook group today that was like, you know, I launched an amazing book, I did everything right, and now it's not making any money, what do I do? Um, when the authors say they've done everything right and they're totally flummoxed, they don't understand why their books aren't selling, almost always the three things that are necessary for book sales are not doing what they need to be doing. So again, you have um, book cover design, which needs to fit in with the other books in your genre that are best-selling books and attract the right audience and immediately communicate the genre or the topic, um, most authors fail there. Even if you have a good book, like a well-designed book cover, it may not be working to attract the right audience and you'll be losing most of your sales there because if they don't care enough by the book cover to read your description and find out what the book is about, you've already lost them. Um, if your book cover is good enough and you get to the description and it doesn't convince them to pay for the book, you're losing the sale there. So the, the description has to hook their attention quickly, um, get them involved in the story. I prefer, like when I'm writing description, I like to hook with a strong um, captivating hook, which is just like an interesting sentence or blurb. Um, then I start right with the story and the action. You want to hit all of the heavy keywords and tropes that your genre readers expect from the genre, but also not just write um, something really bland that could fit every book. Like in the young adult space, almost every book has a young girl who lost her parents, who is trying to figure herself out and her powers and she meets some handsome guy. Um, if you just say stuff like that, you could be talking about Twilight, you could be talking about Hunger Games. It, there's nothing new. So you have to focus on what makes your book new and interesting and intriguing. Um, make it focus on the action, make it focus on the, the conflict, make your characters, even in your, your description, real enough to be interesting and not just um, cookie cutter shapes. Um, what else was I gonna say? Anyway, so your description is really important. And finally, you need reviews. You need ideally 25 reviews. If you have less than 10 reviews, and you're complaining like, I don't understand why my books aren't selling, that's the reason. So you have to get re reviews before you can do book marketing or, or sell books. Um, and that's hard, but I just put up a video yesterday about how to get a thousand reviews. And I think there's a lot of actionable content in there that will help. Um, so reviving a backlist, other considerations will be, should I take all of my old books off and republish as a new books like a new project I wouldn't do that because I think you should keep um, I think even if you are changing the title in Kindle at least you can change the title and update the covers and keep your same project um, I don't think that's true if you've gotten the paperback copy for the paperback the ISBN should be linked to the title so I don't think you can change the title in CreateSpace um, but I think you could redo the the books and the covers in Kindle with the same project and then create a new um, CreateSpace 
paperback account with the new title and match those two together. I think that's how I would do it. You want to keep all the reviews, basically. If you have some reviews, you don't want to start all over um, and work again from zero. It'd be easier to start with what you have and, and to fix it. So what I'll usually do with a relaunch, um, I don't make a big deal out of it, but I'll I'll test out new covers. I don't want to relaunch with a new cover that's also not going to work. So I don't want to like announce to everybody, you know, I, I read my covers and then if that cover doesn't work, if that's not actually your problem, you may want to go back to the other covers or you may want to start new covers. You don't want to be forced in the position where you do something and you're like, hey, I made new covers and then you feel like you can't change them again if they're not working. You always want to have control over your platform. Um, so for me, I'll put up a new cover to see if it works and if it works, then I'll leave it. Um, and then I know that it's working. And I also recently, for Shearwater, I redid my blurb and my cover. It's not the first time I've done that, um, but I'm always trying to get my rank up higher. Uh, so after doing that, now I'm getting, like, I'm sticking around 5,000 in the Amazon store, which is great for that book, because it's a long book. I could probably charge three and nine. And if I were still in Kindle Unlimited, I would make a lot of money for page reads, because it's it's, there's a lot of pages. Um, what was I going to say? So you, when you do a relaunch, you basically want to take the same project and you want to make changes to make sure it'll sell better. But you don't just want to guess. You don't just want to say, I'm going to try this new cover and do a relaunch. You really want to test and make sure you have found the better cover and the better description that's actually going to sell more books. And that's something you want to test out casually. So it's easier and faster to test those out with free books or 99 cent books because you'll get more Tra tra traffic um, on your page so it's it's faster to see results but when you have something you are pretty sure that's working then you want to go big that's when I would do another round of ads I would do another free campaign another 99 cent campaign I would um, ask my list or my followers to spread the word about my new cover or um, my new deals so I would want to push it pretty hard, but you just want to make sure that it's working. Like now that I know my books are working, I can spend more on advertising because I know the new cover and the description is converting. Um, so I know it's making money and so I can spend a lot more on advertising. That's really important. I think it's really great. I, I know some authors have a huge backlist. They have like 20 books and they're not selling any books. And there's so many things you can do um, if you're not doing it already. They really should be in Kindle Unlimited. At least some of your books should be in Kindle Unlimited because it's easier to get um, a better rank and to get more visibility and also to earn a lot more money with Kindle Unlimited. And if you have lots of books, I would put your first book as perma-free. Leading into the next book is two nine nine. The next one's three nine nine. Um, and I would do that for every individual series. So if you have a three book series, I would make the first book free or ninety nine cents. You could also, if you're in Kindle Unlimited, keep it at two nine nine and do price pulses where you have free days or 99 cent days with a lot of advertising promotion. Um, that's fine, that's one way to do it. I think you'll spend more money to promote those days and it would be easier just to leave it at free or leave it at 99 cents and you would reach more people with zero promotion or advertising um, which would sell through to the rest of the series. The other thing to watch out for, um, people also ask if you get really frustrated your books aren't selling, um, if it has lots of reviews because you've worked really hard and if it has a great cover and if it has a great blurb, which is almost never the case, um, even very successful authors who are doing really well on Kindle and spending a lot on advertising, who are very savvy about their business, they're usually not doing everything right on their Amazon page. I can usually go to their Amazon page and tell them things they could be doing to sell more books. Um, so all that money they're spending on advertising or promotion is a waste because they really should be focusing on those simple things that they can do to boost their conversion on their Amazon page. But if you have all that set up and you have a primer free book and your primer free book is sticking like in the top 1000 on Amazon, so you know it's getting a lot of downloads um, and there's not a lot of sell through to the rest of your series, that's a problem with the inside. And so that could mean your books don't satisfy readers enough for them to want to keep reading in a series that happens. Um, it could mean that you just wrapped everything up so well in the first book that there's no incentive to go on reading. I found that my my half books that ends on a cliffhanger get much higher click through and, and sell through rates um, to my second books because even though they say I hate it that it's a cliffhanger, I hate it that it's not a full book, they still sell, they still want to buy the next book 
because it doesn't give the whole story. Um, so if you have especially long books, you might want to try out breaking, if you have like 120,000 word books, um, or even 100,000 word books, you might want to try out breaking them into trick chunks. So even um, you could, you know, put out the first 40,000 words and make it 99 cents and do that for all of your books and then put out part two and then start putting out the full books. You really have to make it kind of easier for them to get hooked with the story. Um, and that might work better for you. So you don't want to be afraid to, to test things like that. Um, that's mostly it. Like if you're reviving a series, I don't think you should be doing a lot of marketing or promotion or advertisement. However, you do definitely want to build your list. If you're re relaunching a series or your, all of your books, or if you're reviving like tons of backlist books, maybe you were traditionally published and you've never had to build a platform before, so you don't have an email list, that's really going to hurt you. So um, I have other videos about building your email list, but definitely as part of your relaunch strategy, you want to focus on building a really big email list very quickly that's very targeted. You can do that with free books or book giveaways, um, but that will definitely help you to get the word out. Um, and that's something you should be focused on. But I'll also say finally, like in closing, um, I see lots of authors with really ugly book covers who decide they're going to re relaunch their backlist. And so they get excited to spend some money on book cover design, but they don't learn anything about book cover design. So they end up hiring a designer, maybe a cheap designer to make covers that don't fit the genre. So even if they're better than the previous covers, which were terrible, they're still like a solid mediocre cover that doesn't attract the right audience and probably isn't going to work very well. Um, things are getting really competitive, especially in the young adult space. In different genres, cover design matters less. Um, in young adult, covers are very important. Young adult readers like very visually stunning, beautiful covers. And the traditionally published young adult books have incredible covers. And they're, they're spending more on their cover design to stand out from indie published books. Um, so indie published books who want to keep up in the young adult space have to have really high quality covers done. Um, in other genres, in some other genres, like I used to say sci-fi or um, sci-fi or thriller to some extent, covers are not as important. However, recently, especially in like the space odyssey genre or space opera um, genre, a lot of indie publishers have been spending a lot on super high quality, beautiful covers. Um, which means even if you're writing sci-fi and you want to compete, you're going to have to have nice covers to stand out. So it's a mistake to it's a, it's a mistake to decide to relaunch your entire backlist and still make all the mistakes that all authors make. So you don't just want to say, okay, I have some money now. I'm going to hire a new cover designer. I'm just going to write a new blurb. Um, you don't want to invest a lot of money on a new strategy and promote it really hard and make all the same mistakes that, that are going to hurt your book sales. So you, you need some high quality advice from someone who knows what they're talking about. Um, you need to test the market and not just like ask for feedback. Cause if you ask for feedback from covers on Facebook, um, people won't give you like, you'll get feedback, but it will be from lots of different people. And you'll basically decide to say, well, everybody has a different opinion. So I'm just going to do what I want. That's a huge mistake. Um, there's always a cover that performs better on Amazon and you need to figure that out and not just guess, because that can mean a huge difference in your income. Um, if you do your backlist launch successful, successfully, like if you have 20 books that aren't selling, I think that's really exciting. I wish I had 20 books um, to rebrand because the potential for making lots and lots of money very quickly is, is already there. You just have to make sure, um, first you have to make sure your books sell, which is cover and blurb and reviews. And I hate it when I see, like I said, I see people with 20 books and none of them have more than 20 reviews on their books and they've been out for years. Um, that's a huge critical mistake. You have to watch that other video I posted about getting reviews because you really need to do work for them. Um, so you need to focus on sales and selling, which is just packaging and marketing. Not even marketing, because if you package your book right, like I don't really do any marketing for my books and I still make good money from my books because I know how to make them visible without marketing. Um, but besides selling, you also need to satisfy. So if you're attracting readers and they're the right readers and they're not satisfied with the story, that's because you are not writing books that satisfy readers. Um, and you can, if you want to, that's an intentional decision. You may be, you may be writing what you want to write 
and hoping that some readers will accidentally like it. But that's a very risky strategy to base a business on. So if that's the, what you want to do, that's fine. Um, but it won't be as successful. Or you might get lucky. You might be the 1% of authors who accidentally writes the thing that readers love. That's extremely rare, but it could happen for you. Um, I much prefer knowing what my target audience likes and wants and making sure that I always deliver the good. So I figure out what they want. Um, I write satisfying stories that are what they expect and more so that they're um, thrilled and satisfied and they leave me positive reviews and they buy my, buy my new books. That's a sound business model for me. I think that's a stronger business model for most authors, but I understand that um, there's still a lot of advice out there about how you should just write what you want and write from your passion and stuff like that. Um, generally, I find that that's uh, ideology that authors grow out of. So when you've been doing that for five years and you're tired of, you know, you, you wrote 20 books from the heart that nobody really likes and you're not making any money and you're kind of tired of wasting your time and energy promoting books that nobody's very interested in, uh, you may reach a point where you decide you'd like to try to connect with your market better and write books that people actually love and rave about. I think that's an intentional decision. I don't think that's selling out. Um, I think that's kind of a position that every author reaches eventually when they get desperate enough, they figure out the way they've been doing things isn't working and they're ready to do something that actually works. So those are some of my, my advice. Sorry about the live video coming at the wrong time and possibly um, not working very well. Hopefully this live video uh, works, but as I said, I can't even see myself on camera. So um, I'll keep experimenting. Eventually I'll probably get the system down and then I'll try to keep doing these <clears throat> every day. Thanks. Bye-bye.